Hello and welcome to Young Turks, India's longest running show on startups and entrepreneurship. I'm Shireen Bhan. Now the country is all set to go into its biggest shopping frenzy as we enter the festive season. The great Indian e-commerce sales are back and this year could be special for the industry. The big bargain days in the coming months will mark the 10th year of e-commerce festive season sales in India. Now, how has the decade panned out for click and order and has it ushered in India's digital revolution? Following a 20-fold growth since 2014, we could exit 2023 with annual online shopping worth over 5 lakh crore rupees as per a Red Sea report. Now, this festive season could be the best ever with merchandise worth 90,000 crore rupees expected to be sold in just a month or so, which contributes to a fifth of India's e-retail sales every year. But... There are concerns. E-commerce growth in the last couple of quarters has been the lowest historically. Inflation is pinching the pocket and enthusiasm in small town India has taken a beating. However, it's not as bad, says Deloitte's global consumer pulse tracker. Let's listen in to Rajiv Singh, partner at Deloitte. While globally there is a lot of talk about recession, there is a lot of talk of high inflation. Even in India, for example, we see high inflation. But uh, the consumer sentiment in India seems to be going very, very strong. So the research that we do on a quarterly basis, this indicates that the consumer sentiment is only going more and more stronger despite inflation staying higher. And uh, the more we talk to the consumers, the more we are hearing that uh, the consumers are wanting to spend on, on luxury products. They want to spend more on premium things. And this has nothing to just do with buying of goods and so on and so forth. But they are also looking at, say, for example, going on vacations but not going to vacations next door but going to say distant vacations we are growing as a country our per capita income is growing up especially in the urban areas we have definitely seen a uh, definite increase at the same time one thing that we need to keep in mind is that the savings percentage has gone a little down and the discretionary spend that the consumers are doing especially post covid has seen a hike it's just the confidence that the consumers have currently that uh, they will be able to manage with with the uncertain expenses that may come come their way, maybe from medical perspectives or anything uncertain that hits them. Consumer confidence is high. That's the Deloitte view to take the discussion forward. We're now joined by Nandita Sina, the CEO of Mintra, Atul Mehta, the Chief Operating Officer at e-commerce logistics platform ShipRocket, and also Anil Kumar, the founder and CEO of Red Sea. Nandita and gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here on Young Turks. Uh, uh, you know, Anil, I, I want to address what we are seeing in terms of trends, demand trends at this point in time, backed by what Red Sea is picking up. As we just heard there from Deloitte, consumer sentiment continues to be strong. Uh, premiumization, the luxury market continues to hold uh, very, very strong at this point in time. Uh, but there are signs of concern, especially on account of inflation. Now, what's the expectation? Do you expect this to be a blockbuster festive season? Hi, Shane. Uh, okay, so I think uh, this is the 10th year, as you uh, rightly mentioned, a special uh, festive year. Uh, but I think uh, there are probably two themes playing out here. One is, of course, the larger theme about the consumer inflation, uh, the changes in the demand pattern in overall Indian con from an overall Indian consumer perspective. And the second uh, theme which is playing out is how are the internet platforms really uh, geared up to net the consumer demand as mm. we speak today. Uh, so I think the, uh, while I agree with the fact that, you know, uh, Indian consumers demand is robust and inflation is not the biggest challenge, but when it comes to the India internet story, uh, the, the big theme yeah. which has been for the last one year is how to be looking good on unit economics. And that has probably, you know, hmm. made platforms be a lot more economical about how much do they spend. And that is something which we believe is going to play out in the festive season as well. But the good part is in our expectation okay. that... Uh, sorry, yeah. Are you seeing something? No, no, that's an interesting point that you make. But uh, let's address the silver lining that you were talking about as well. Uh, go ahead and then I'll, then I'll come back with my question. I think the, the, the silver lining here is that the event over the last 10 years has become a pretty big jamboree and everyone has started respecting that consumers do splurge and spend around the festive period. And what does what it means is that the amount of spend or investment which needs to be done to make this event successful 
uh, doesn't need to come completely from the platforms, but rather a lot of this money has been pumped in from the financial partners, which are credit cards and banks and they D2C brands and so on. Mm. So I would say that uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the overall investment, which will go for the festive season, should definitely not go down. And we'll definitely see the largest festive season ever. But probably from a growth perspective, maybe the growth might not be as high as we've seen in the last few years. Okay, so the largest festive season ever. But as you point out, the pace of growth uh, uh, has come off on account of the many challenges that we just spoke of. But Nandita, uh, let's address the issue that uh, Anil just raised. Uh, look, it is a challenging environment, not only on account of inflation, which is biting the pockets of the consumer, but also platforms uh, you know, are facing trouble because the free money, the easy money is not that easy to get by anymore. So uh, one is the question of how much is the consumer willing to splurge, but the other question is how much are platforms willing to splurge to entice the consumer and do they have the room, the flexibility to do so today? Hi, Shireen. Um, I think the way to look at this question is really to say that what is it that we are adding for the consumer uh, in the festive season and what are the number of new things and opportunities that brands actually see to expand their consumer base during the festive season. This is probably the best time where they can increase their fr consumer franchise. And if you look at a platform like Mintra, for example, you will have this, um, you know, festive season, uh, almost, you know, new categories which are actually becoming the mainstay in terms of how we are looking at the customer wallet. So a category like beauty and personal mm. care has almost 300 new brands which will participate for the first time in our festive season. Uh, and 50 of them are actually mm. international on the apparel side, 25 plus new international brands will celebrate in the Indian festive season for the first time. You have, the country has 100 okay. million Gen Z consumers. So they will probably, some of them will shop for the first time on in the festive season. D2C, you know, Anil spoke about it, how that is actually expanding their customer franchise through platforms like Mintra and using hmm. this as a, you know, an occasion to actually increase the customer penetration and wallet share both. So I think there is opportunity mm. for us to look at how we are expanding the uh, offering for our customers and brands. How do they kind of look at mm. the customer franchise and what do they want to do about it is one way of looking at it. And as we enter into the festive season, yeah. I think the good vacations are always, you know, festivals like Rakhi, Ganesha, Turthi, Onam. They are, you know, a bellwether in terms of how festive season looks like. And we've seen good traction mm. in these festivals, uh, especially around core categories and new categories. So I think the opportunity is about okay. you know, really helping customers and brands discover each other, actually. And that's where uh, the best value comes to the customers. You know, since we're speaking about value, Nandita, and that's an interesting point that you uh, made, and that's what I want to understand from you as well. As we see this shift away from what were typically low uh, margin uh, categories like uh, mobile phones and so on and so forth into perhaps what could potentially be higher margin categories like beauty, personal care and apparel, are you seeing this, uh, this margin mix change to benefit platforms like yours? I think uh, a lot of these categories that you spoke about, Shireen, are actually selection uh, driven categories where there is a lot of scope to help customers buy more through the different categories and brands that we expose them to. And that's where I think there is a need for us to look at new customers coming onto the platform as well as the customers who are part of the platform buying more categories and buying more brands. Um, and I'll give an example, like for us, if you look at the last uh, few festivals that we've seen in this year, we've seen almost 100% growth in ethnic mm. wear as a category. There is a more trend okay. uh, buying that is happening from the men's wear perspective. Fusion is a big category that's coming up. If mm. you look at some of the big gifting categories like fragrances or, uh, you know, accessories, they all are growing. So I think as customer share or customer comfort with e-commerce is growing, the number of categories and the share of mm. wallet is actually growing on some of these categories, which is a good uh, indication of how probably uh, both growth and uh, best, you know, uh, uh, margins, etc. will play out for the platforms.
Yeah, I, I would imagine. Arthur, let me come to you to start with. Have you contributed uh, to aiding sales growth for, for, for Nandita? She talked about menswear being a category that's seeing a fair amount of traction. I don't know if you've been contributing to that or not, Atul. But, you know, take me through how you're gearing up for the festive season. Yo, uh, thanks, Shireen. I think... Uh... For us, uh, see, one, we, we from a vantage point of the biggest D2C enabler, we start seeing a precursor of what is going to happen, like Nandita talked about. The festive, the 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 pre-season sales have been doing well for our merchants. We have seen in August the Rakhi mm. sale uh, for D2C brands, and a lot of them start doing it earlier on their direct commerce uh, websites before the marketplaces. So we're seeing a lot of traction. We're seeing a lot of tier two, tier three penetration going up this time. Right, first time mm. shoppers mm. and shopping on these websites, and a lot of discretionary spends on categories which are long tail, uh, right? Whether the accessories, mm. uh, whether it is gifting, uh, whether it is home decor. So that I think is our good signs on the lead up to festive season. What the consu consumer sentiment is, mm. how willing are they uh, to spend on these discretionary items? Uh, I think on 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 how we are mm. uh, prepared. For it, uh, see, we, we take care of uh, more the experience which our merchants are able to deliver, right? So we have uh, almost doubled our uh, warehousing footprint. We are now at 2 million square feet. We have opened three state-of-the-art warehouses across Delhi, uh, Bombay, Bangalore, 100K plus facilities so that our merchants are able to deliver faster. Mm. We are going to operate our warehouses at uh, in three shifts, double the manpower. Uh, yeah. that, that's on the warehousing side. On the last mile side, uh, you know, doing capacity planning, ramping up our analytics to be able to predict where, which are the areas of stress for merchants so that they can move the volume from uh, uh, supplier one to supplier two. Uh, and on the conversion side as yeah. well. So we, like as Shiprocket, we have been helping merchants with post experience, uh, post uh, checkout experience. But this year we are helping them with uh, remarketing, uh, creating festive campaigns for SMB merchants we work with so that they can retarget to their yeah. uh, customers and get them to shop uh, on the platform. You know, important point that you mentioned, let me get Anil to comment on that. And Anil, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, uh, you know, the Red Sea report, which basically talks about how the average spend per shopper stagnated at about $273 in FI23 versus $272 in FI22. Uh, so one, how much of a concern is that? And two, again, this, you know, metro, non-metro demand that we were talking about. Yes, we've actually seen the non-metro demand pick up in the last few years. Uh, but uh, given the pressures at this point in time, what's the expectation uh, as far as demand outlook is concerned on the non-metro side? Right. So, Shireen, what happened last year was, and actually it's been a trend over the last couple of years, that the tier two market or the smaller cities have been the big demand driver for the e-commerce platforms. In fact, yeah. a majority of the GMB as well as customer transaction growth uh, over the last few years have come in from the smaller cities. Uh, and uh, the implication of that has been the small city customers have also been buying a low AOV products. So which means the new customers which are coming mm. from small cities are actually bringing down the AOV, uh, while metros have been raising the AOV to some extent. And that's where the flattening or a slight mm. uh, reduction in the AOV has been seen over the last couple of years or so, one year or so. Uh, as we see this year, I think uh, uh, our expectation is the uh, the massive demand difference between the small city and large city is going to taper down, which means the growth from the large city and the small city is going to look similar. Uh, it is a combination of a couple mm. of reasons is that we see a lot of folks who really migrated to small cities after COVID have come back. So the demand concentration, which was yeah. uh, moved towards small cities, has actually evened out now. And also from a penetration perspective, we see that uh, there is a bit of a tapering which we've seen over the last one year in general. And that's where the small city demand is not going to be exceptionally higher. Uh, one additional point I just want to okay. talk about, just going back to the category mix you really spoke about and has an implication on AOV, average order value as we call it. Uh, historically, mm -hmm. we've seen mobiles has been a very big uh, contributor for the GMV. And when uh, when the mm. big billion and the GIF really started about a few years back, mobiles used to account for, for about 50 to 60% of GMV. 
last year we saw that contribution mm. coming down to 35% and that's a low margin category mm. as you just mentioned fashion yeah. was a big bumper category which really grew and became actually the largest category last year across the board and uh, one of the largest categories when it comes to the uh, festive period at about 24% uh, the categories we we mm. seeing uh, expecting the demand to really go very high in this particular festive season would be uh, bpc which is beauty and personal care as we call it large yeah. electronics and small right. uh, appliances okay so those are the categories to watch out for this festive season uh, now this and gentlemen we are going to take a quick break here on young turks we continue to chat about what the festive season is likely to mean in terms of hiring as well for platforms uh, what could it do for the gig economy that and more when we return You're watching Young Turks. The festive season is here and we're tracking how the e-commerce space is likely to play out. I'm in conversation with Nandita Sinha, the CEO of Mintra, Atul Mehta, the Chief Operating Officer at e-commerce logistics platform ShipRocket, and Anil Kumar, the founder and CEO of Red Sea. Uh, you know, I'm looking at a team lease report which talks about festive season demand surge resulting in the need for more workers as well. Uh, it says overall e-commerce industry is expected to create 7 lakh gig jobs in the second half of 2023 and festive hiring is expected to see a 25% increase in gig jobs year on year. Atul, let me start by asking you, uh, you know, explain to me, given the kind of demand that you're anticipating, what should we expect you to do in terms of hiring? So, uh, yeah, we've already kicked in the hiring we need to. Uh, I think I talked about we start seeing sales a bit early on the direct commerce platform as well. But yeah, we are expecting to have uh, almost an 100% increase in manpower to manage uh, the uh, festive demand load. And it's a combination of both. I think one is the actual growth we expect on, on account of the festive season. And also, uh, I think a key part of uh, the uh, a key part is also the experience which we are able to offer to the consumers and hence running more shifts in the warehouse, ensuring the one day, two day, three day delivery promises are not breached, even though there is 1.5 or 2x demand on certain days is driving that increase. So yes, we are expecting a almost doubling of the manpower we have in our warehouses to be able to manage the peak volume mm. uh, with an increased service levels as well at the, at the same time. You know, uh, what would that mean in terms of numbers when you talk about a doubling and 100% growth in numbers? Uh, what is the current uh, uh, headcount that you have? And uh, I'm just trying to understand what that could mean. So yeah, around, so we operate almost 40 odd warehouses. So yeah, like you, you can talk about some 20, 30 K gig workers doubling over the next uh, uh, one, one and a half months uh, as we get into the festive uh, season. Okay. Okay, uh, that's that's good news as far as the gig economy is concerned. Nandita, uh, you know, all kinds of big numbers are, are being bandied about. Uh, in An Anil's words, this is likely to be historically the biggest ever festive season sale that we are going to see in the 10-year history uh, that, uh, that we've seen. Uh, what's the aspiration for you at Mintra? What's the target that you've set? What are you aiming for? Um, so I think I'll probably answer this in a view of saying that our... Uh, and, and we are in the 10th year of festive season uh, in that sense. And I think one of the big opportunities that we see during the festive season is really how do you increase your customer franchise? And that's what the core goal is as yeah. we get into the festive season. Of course, there is uh, revenue that we look at it. But I think the biggest, uh, the role that the festive season actually also plays is how do we keep increasing our customer franchise? A lot of this actually comes in 
from newer cities so non metro atul spoke about it so i think one of the big goals is to really how do we go deeper into non metros um and the team has been prepping yeah. for it uh, in terms of adding more selection we've added almost 5 lakh selection which caters to non metro uh, the other goal is to really look at right. how do you increase the num- like how do you premiumize and diversify the category mix that you see for customers so that's the other goal that how do you actually yeah. ensure that categories like beauty and personal care home uh accessories footwear they kind of see the glory that apparel has been seeing over the last few years uh and then there is premiumization as a goal uh because overall you know as you mm. covered in the first part of your conversation that there is the income uh you know which is growing for a certain set of customers so how do you premiumize customers as they build more mm. comfort with e-commerce so i think those would be some of the goals that we have i think Uh, again i think just I, I, a reflection okay, of how I'm the still, last I'm, i'm still going to try and pin you down to a i'm still going to try and elicit a number from you in terms of the goal that you have nandita uh, let's talk about <laughs> user base you said that you aspire to a deepen penetration as far as the non metros are concerned what is the current metro non metro user base mix for you and what's the aspiration there our uh, user base today is uh, uh, looking at a 40 45% non metro base and a 55% metro base i think that's where we are trying to build more non metro consumers in and increase their spends because there is a real gap that actually uh, we can fulfill in terms of the aspiration and accessibility so that's what the goal is that how do you take it closer to 50 50 uh today the mix stands at around 40 45% for non metro versus metro uh for a platform like mintra um so that's where i would uh, you know leave you with a number okay so a 50 50 split is what you're hoping for by when sorry uh, i think uh, i couldn't hear the question 50 50 50 by when uh hoping like next year i think as we get as we build that base during this festive season i think next year we should be able to uh go towards that journey uh, and 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 accelerate that journey actually okay anil you know and this is what i want to understand from you because uh, here we're talking about the mix changing nandita's talking about 50 50 split down the middle between metro and non metro uh forget gmv give me your gmv uh, estimate number but i'm saying forget gmv because let's not obsess about that let's talk about you know maturation as far as the user base is concerned and what that also means in terms of monetization since we are now all talking about unit economics and profitability you're on mute anil sorry i hope i'm audible now yeah so shireen if you look at yes, the yes, uh, number of customers who are shopping uh, online on an annual basis in india pretty much about 150 million odd uh, give or take and uh, a good uh, two third of these customers are coming from tier 2 cities uh, about 20% of these coming from metro are about 15% of them coming from tier 1 as i spoke about uh, historically over the last 2 3 years we've seen that the growth of the small city customers have been growing almost more than two times of metro and tier 1 city so those have been the uh, consumers who've been joining the indian e-tailing band bandwagon for the first time and as nandita rightly mentioned that festive is a great occasion where uh, platform see it is an uh, it is it as one of the big opportunities to net some other first time users onto the platforms and then have a certain kind of a retention from them so practically we see a bump in on the number of customers who shop online uh in festive every year like for example last year what we saw was uh, there was about 25 to 30% jump in terms of the number of shoppers who started buying online first time uh, on on the oh. festive season <clears throat> going on to the monetization bit uh, uh uh i think one of the things which is happening is the category shift as i spoke about a bit earlier is one of the key uh, drivers for yeah. monetization where uh high margin categories like fashion beauty personal care are the one which have uh, anywhere between 15 to 35% margin versus metro uh, versus mobile having about 4 or 5% margin so that is another bit which is happening around the uh, monetization and the uh, the other bit about 
offloading the expense of the overall festive season between various partners rather than platforms bearing all of it on their own. That is another bit which is uh, helping the platforms uh, monetize and uh, get a better unit economics. Okay, well, uh, Anil, Atul and uh, Nandita, we wish you the very best of luck. And uh, uh, Nandita and Atul, we will check in with you for your individual stories and your individual milestones at the end of this festive season. And Anil, uh, we will uh, talk to you to get a picture as far as the ecosystem is concerned at the end of this festive season. Will it turn out to be the best ever is the question and is the hope. That's it then on this edition of Young Turks. Uh, we'll take a quick break and be back with you in a moment.